Today we're going to talk about chapter 10 from our book, which is about between subjects factorial designs. So the first question we want to ask is, what is a factor? And the fa a factor is the same thing as an independent variable. They are interchangeable terms if you have two factors. A two-factor study is a two-independent variable study. So a factorial design contains more than one independent variable. Um, so they do an example with psychotherapy and antidepressant drugs. But I think it's, it's a simple thought experiment that you can do, uh, which is to think about your weekend. What determines what you do for fun on the weekend? Well, it's probably what's going on um, on campus or at home, wherever you're at, what your friends are doing, uh, if you have a significant other, what they are up to or what they want to do, how much homework that you have or, or schoolwork, um, how much money you have, uh, the weather, and whether or not you have to work. Uh, all of those things, uh, that's seven different things or maybe eight, um, so whatever you do is determined by multiple factors um, interacting with each other. And so maybe you have to work, um, and then that really drives a lot of uh, what you're going to do for the weekend. Um, so life is really a factorial design. It's not just one thing that determines what you do. It's a number of things that determine what you do. Um, because they're more like real life, factorial designs are higher in external validity than single independent variable designs. And as it says on the slide, a two-factor experiment, meaning two independent variables, is the simplest type of factorial design. So what, can an what kind of information can a factorial design provide um, about both treatment and interaction effects? And so that's one of the reasons why we like them. We can see how two variables interact with each other. Um, yeah, and I'll give you some examples here in a minute. So the main effect is the action of a single independent variable uh, in a dependent, um, excuse me, on the dependent variable. So a main effect is the action of a single independent variable in a factorial design. Um, it's not there can be as many main effects as independent variables. There are as many main effects as independent variables. So if we have a study with three independent variables, we would have three main effects. Uh, four independent variables, you have four main effects. Um, yeah, so two independent variables, you'd have two main effects. Um, what would be an example of a main effect? Um, well, uh, there's an example with exercise uh, and duration on depression. Um, I'd rather give you a different example, too. Um, we could have people watch uh, different types of newscasters um, read different types of news and then see who you remember better, okay? So we could do a three-factor study, which means we have three independent variables, where we look at the gender of the newscaster, and that would be male or female, the age of the newscaster, and so we could have a kid, which you see the kid's news on the, all, all the time, um, or a college student, which you see when you see a campus um, uh, news program, or an old person, so maybe that's the usual newscasters in major cities. Um, so maybe somebody in their 50s. I'm almost in my 50s, so I can say that's old. And so um, the third independent variable we could test is the type of news, and then we could have good news, bad news, or neutral news. And then the dependent variable is how well you're able to remember the news. Um, oh, and I guess I should say what the type of news is. Good news might be, since this is a rural area, it might be something like uh, the corn crop is doing really well this year or, you know, Truman's cutting tuition. Um, bad news could be the corn crop is doing really poorly or Truman's raising tuition by 20%. And neutral news could be, you know, same old, same old. Uh, corn prices are stable and, uh, you know, Truman's having a modest increase in tuition or something. Okay. How do we determine whether we have main effects? We perform an appropriate statistical test. Uh, probably uh, an ANOVA, which is analysis of variance, or a MANOVA, which is a multivariate analysis of variance. It depends on uh, whether we have uh, one dependent variable, which would be an ANOVA, or multiple um, dependent variables, which would be a MANOVA. 
In a two by three by three study, how many independent variables and treatment conditions are there? So there's three independent variables and 18 treatment conditions. And the way you can determine this is two times three is six, times three is 18. And so in the example I gave earlier, gender of the newscasters, male and female, that's the two. Age of the newscasters, kids, college, and old, that's three. That's the, the three in the, in the second independent variable there. And then the type of news, good, bad, and neutral, is that last three. And so you would have 18 different treatment conditions in a um, two by three by three factorial design. Oh, and this is uh, a different example. Their, their example is not actually an experiment. I'm giving an example that's an experiment. The, the PowerPoints here are actually quasi-experimental because um, you can't control a person's parent, step-parent, partner's, parent's partner relationship and having neurological damage that's just, you know, it's over the top. So, um, yeah. So what is an interaction? Um, when there's an interaction, the effect of one independent variable is different across levels of the other independent variable. So we could say from the example that I gave, um, perhaps people best remember uh, information that's bad news that's read by a female child. Because maybe you would say, that might be the most memorable because you, would, you might say, oh my gosh, you know, um, why is that little girl reading sad news about the corn crop? Um, and so you'd have an interaction there between gender, age, and the type of news um, that's being read. And then here's a different one. Um, if Paxil produces greater reductions in depression in the cognitive behavioral therapy condition than the waiting list condition, um, that's an interaction between the drug and psychotherapy. So very good. A higher order interaction is an interaction among three or more independent variables. Actually, I think of this in terms of uh, being among four or more um, independent variables as a, a higher order interaction. But I checked it online, and the book is right. I like to prove the book wrong sometimes, but um, officially it is three or more. The problem is that they're hard to interpret. Um, two independent variables interacting with each other, easy to interpret. Three, hard. Four, impossible. Uh, four and up. Four, uh, five independent variables, forget it. It's, it's impossible to, to try to interpret. Here's a hypothetical example that they keep coming back to. Um, for the study that I talked about with the gender, age, and type of news, uh, you could add a fourth independent variable to that, uh, the way the person's dressed. So they might be dressed casually versus formally, and that might have an impact. Um, you might get a significant interaction among all those variables, which would be a higher order interaction, which would be essentially uninterpretable. Um, right, and so if all of these interact, um, uh, or if all four were having an interaction in the example that I gave. So, how many interactions are possible in a study with three independent variables? Well, uh, let's stick with our two by three by three, and what we can do is we can label each of these um, A, B, and C. And so the gender of the newscasters would be, uh, uh, we could label as A. The age of the newscasters we could label as B. And the type of news we could label as C. And so uh, when we're looking at, at uh, two-way interactions, we're looking at permutations, not combinations. And so A can interact with B. So gender of the newscasters can interact with the age of the newscasters. Um, A can interact with C. So the gender of the newscasters could interact with the type of news. And B could interact with C. So the age of the newscaster could interact with the type of news that they're reading. And so you get three two-way interactions. Um, a, B, A, C, and B, C. You also get one three-way interaction. Because A, B, and C can interact with each other also. But that's a, that's a higher order interaction, a three-way interaction between gender of the newscasters, the age of the newscasters, and the type of news that they're reading. Uh, one of the things that we really like about having a factorial design, though, 
is uh, we could test a hypothesis about each of these. And so each of these interactions and main effects. And so if we have a uh, two by three by three design um, with three independent variables, as we talked about, uh, there would be seven hypotheses total that you could test. Uh, one for each main effect. So uh, again, one for the gender, one for age, one for the type of news. And then, as we said earlier, there would be three two-way interactions and one three-way interaction. So three for the main effects, three for the two-way interaction, one for the three-way interaction gives us a total of seven testable hypotheses. And so that's another reason why we like factorial designs. An interaction uh, has a big effect on our results because uh, if we, if an interaction is a significant interaction is present, we generally disregard the main effect. And the reason why is because uh, it essentially the interaction supersedes the the uh, main effect in importance. So that um, see, because if if one variable changes in the presence or absence of a second independent variable, that means the two are said to interact. Uh, it really makes the um, main effect much less important than the, than the interaction. And so, um, yeah, so the interaction is, is, is crucial there. The factor labeling method um, puts them in parentheses. So a, uh, that's a two by two, uh, type of name and length of name. Uh, for our example, it's a two by three by three, gender by age by type of news. Another way of labeling it would be the factor and levels method. So this would be uh, in the example, you can read that. For the example that I gave, it's a two by three by three. Uh, gender, male, female, uh, age of newscaster, child, college aged and old, and type of news, good, bad, and neutral. Uh, factor and levels method does provide more detailed information. So this, that is true. C'est vrai. Why use uh, factorial design? Well, you get both interactions, uh, more hypotheses to test, meaning that you can test the interactive effects, and uh, higher external validity when you use a factorial design. So that's really win-win-win. Uh, you get a lot of, of mileage out of factorial designs. And then lastly, we can have uh, issues keeping these simple because we run into these practical limitations. Basically, it's tough to simultaneously manipulate multiple independent variables. But um, that wraps up Chapter 10, and thanks for listening.